Oh, how you guys, how you guys doing out there? Hello, people. What's up? Hope things go. Hope you having a good weekend. Um, mine's is going pretty well myself. Just being blessed being here the other day. Anyway, I'm about to show you a video on this young lady. And this young lady is this is dealing with the situation with TD Jakes. And you you know what's going on. Now he's I've heard over the grapevine that he's he's going after everybody's channel. Anybody talk about it. I think he think that this is gonna solve the problem. But people not talking about it. He's, he's, but that's it's it's too late. It's already the secular world where his people and believers already be exposed. And some people had some comments on this young woman. And it was some people were nice and some people were nice. But after I give, give, show you this couple videos, I'm going to give you a personal testimony how I believe this young woman is the real deal. And she called herself um, I forgot, uh, the master the prophecy. I, I forgot. But you, 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 you recognize her. Hello again and welcome to the master's voice. master's voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. Today I am bringing a word that the Lord has been pressing on me for the last few days. So normally when I do these prophecies, I will endeavor as much as possible to do them in groups. So it is good to do prophecies about invasion in a group. It is good to do prophecies about um, changes in the economy in a group. And that is why I have done series as long as I've been doing this work on the master's voice. But occasionally, very occasionally, especially more now, God is going to absolutely disrupt the flow of the prophecy. So I was handling sexual immorality. I was handling false prophecy. I was handling exposure of the things that people do in the circles of the rich and the powerful, the famous, the well-known people. But there is a theme that has been coming forth for at least the last few weeks. And the Lord is saying that the high and the mighty are going to fall. The Lord is saying that there are going to be incredible scandals. Scandals that are going to shock people. Not because they will be scandals of allegation. These are going to be scandals with rock hard proof. And as I handle today's prophecy, this is a grave prophecy. It relates to the series that I did. I think it was just in July when God had said it is enough of the false prophets. It is enough of the false teachers. It is enough of the people who lie and mislead the church. So there's a secondary tier that God is not so, he is dismissive of those people. And it's those, it's the self-appointed people who God never called to the office. There will be a separate punishment for you if you come and touch the prophetic and you are not a prophet. Separate punishment for you if you go out and teach people and you are not called to teach people. Separate punishment if you are claiming that you are apostle, bishop, highest level, whatever, and you are not those things. There's just a completely separate punishment for you, and that is because you have disdained God's holy ordinances that the Bible says that Jesus Christ himself gave gifts to the church. You're not a gift, so you're in the midst of the body, and you're not a gift. You are a nightmare, an anti-gift, operating in a false flow, a false spirit. You're filling people with error. You're filling people with lies. You're filling people with false prophecy that is coming out of the polluted, stagnant pond of your belly. False dreams, lies, picking up things from the news and then saying it's prophecy, God is going to deal with those people separately. But I said in several prophecies, such as the one that said no more false prophecy, I said that it is a very heavy thing when the Father himself comes and puts his hand on the people that he did call. There are a contingent of people in this earth and they are being moved. They are being moved out of the way for a new contingent of people that God also has called. But before God takes these old people, before he takes these, some of them generals in the faith, some of these people have left behind a legacy that you really can't fight with. 
But because they have compromised, because they have handed themselves over to the devil to just be used as tools of destruction now against God's bloated, misled, and highly deceived sheep, most of the church is operating in a deep level of deception that I really don't have time to go into right now. Because these people have come, God says you have come and you have increased the wound of my people. What does this mean? The people already wounded themselves because they hate to hear the truth. The Bible says that in the last days, they will not abide sound teaching. They will heap up teachers for themselves. What does it mean to heap up teachers? It means that if Jesus were to come and inspect your YouTube playlist of the pastors you are listening to, you have piled up about 35 to 800 false prophets, false pastors, people whose words perfectly reflect the lie that you exist in. That's what it means to heap up. It means that you have created a careful playlist of every lie currently on the lie playlist on earth and you're listening to those lies while you drive and you're thinking bless god i feel so energized and you are being energized lifted up like a kite upon false winds you're preparing your field and you think it's going to rain on the field but then you're listening to dry clouds that have no rain and you're going to sit there until you finally realize oh no i have to understand that reality is not matching up with what these people said so when God comes to judge these people for adding deeper pain to the wound that those who love lies and those who are gullible have already received, it is going to be a very heavy punishment. And I made it clear that the punishment that God has for many of these people is death. As far back as October 2021, I was saying that I was seeing ministers pass away in the pulpit from heart attacks and strokes. So God will not even allow some of these people the dignity of dying quietly at home. You're going to die in front of the whole church. And only the wise in the church who have discernment will understand that this is the kind of Ananias and Sapphira judgment where as you are in the middle of a new lie, as you are in the middle of another sugary teaching, he will strike you right where you stand. And God has always been telling me, and I will share a little bit of testimony because it was bubbling in me. I'm not one to share anything about personal, but um, wherever it's going to serve better understanding, I, I don't mind sharing. But God was telling me that these people are going to be taken away in the midst of their sin as an example to the modern church that the modern church does not know God. The modern church really doesn't know who God is. They have been taught this flavorful, savory soup of a God who is just so accommodating, a God who is willing to bend to the church's many flaws. So in the old days, it was understood that you have to separate of your sin. You have to loose yourself from the temptations and run after God. But that gospel became boring to the modern church and, and it was just not filling up the churches and people were feeling that the yoke of all these requirements is too much like the Old Testament and too much like the law and let's get some pithy teaching in here that gets the people going woo, woo -hoo. And so the gospel eventually became this corrupt and perverted pretzel where now you do nothing to change. You do nothing to purify. You do nothing to get better. You just stay the way you are and God's going to wrap himself around you in a cloud of acceptance, a cloud of love, and you just live your truth. The new gospel is live your truth. If you're gay, live your truth. If you're trans, live your truth. Living your truth means that if you find one of those horrible churches that won't accept you, you can just take your feather boa and just flounce down the street until you find a trans acceptance church, an LDGBTJYK church. And then you just jump in there and live your truth because in that church, they have grasped the bull of the gospel by the horns. And they will accept you because God said, love at all costs. Love them. Love their sin. Love it all. So the brief testimony that I will show for us to understand that God is not interested in what you think, what you believe, and what you know is that I came up in great churches. I will always salute those men of God. They did not teach me lies. 
They did not fill me with a doctrinal error of the sort that is flying around now. They did not accept indiscipline. When I was in church, it was understood that the pastor has the right to discipline the flock because the flock is the flock and the pastor is the pastor. You could not just send emails to the pastor and tell him, well, I was reading the Apocrypha and it's amazing that you just don't bring up Enoch and the fallen angels and I just don't feel comfortable here. You, you couldn't even think of doing such things. You went to church to hear the word of God and if you were blessed enough to be put in good churches like I was in my youth, you got the truth and the whole truth. There are men of God who preach the revelation according to all that they had. And the truth of the matter is, is that there just wasn't fallen angel doctrine and many of the things that God had to bring me into himself. And so the Lord orchestrated an opportunity in my life that I did not understand at the time what that opportunity was. And God took me away from busyness, serving in church, uh, being the Christian auntie that was always giving counseling and everything. He separated me unto himself because God will always call people that he is going to use as blades in the end times. Before a blade can be any use, it's just a hunk of metal. It's just a piece of steel. It has potential, but it's not useful. It's just a blunt instrument. And so at that time, pastors were instructing my life, but God was instructing me also. And there came a time where God grew dissatisfied between the disconnect, and he pulled me away unto himself for a period of nearly three to four years. And it was in that time where the Lord gave me my commission in 2012 and began to reveal to me such mind-blowing things that, to be honest, the foundation that I had, which was already strong, it had to fall apart under the weight of learning that on TV, when you're watching the X-Men, the X-Men are actually nothing more than the mighty men, the men of renown from Genesis 6. God loaded so many things onto my old foundation that it broke. And I began to know God after I had recovered from the shock because he is merciful. And if you are humble, God will nurse you through all the fear. He will nurse you through all the shock. I had to come into the knowledge of a stronger and much more robust foundation. And one of the things I learned about God that is not being taught in any churches is that God is not afraid to kill you. God does not stay up at night wondering if he should take an unfaithful person from the land. If you read the Old Testament, you will know that you could be put in the ground and ancient Israel would continue in the everyday life of milking the goats and grinding corn. And even if they were missing you under your grave of stones where they had stoned you yesterday, not a single person was going to bring up your name in the camp because they didn't want to join you out there at the periphery. So the original people in the scripture understood that there are things there are transgressions for which there's no forgiveness. There's no acceptance. God is merciful and God will bear long with you season after season. But as I said about the bull heifer, when he keeps calling bull heifer pastors, bull heifer prophets, I am not speaking about the fakery of the fakers. I'm speaking of the true gifts who may even now be compromising. And by the grace of God, this video may land on your feet. When he keeps calling you and you won't come back into the barn, he's going to shut the barn doors. And because you're not a flea, you will not be able to get in. Today's prophecy was received very early in the morning, cloudy morning, a fitting morning for these words. September 13, 2022, and the title of this prophecy, the entire focus of this prophecy is the man known as Bishop T.D. Jakes. The title is T.D. Jakes and the Fivefold Ministry. And I'm, this prophecy is just... It's not even published yet, and so I'm just going to read from what I have. Oh, before I start, I will go chronologically. So, in 2014, let me just go here. 
the, the title of this prophecy, this is a private prophecy, and I shared a little bit about it in the prophecy that is called No More False Prophecy. I'm just going to read a few things here, not everything. This prophecy I received when I was in that period where God had isolated me unto himself. And one of the things, as I said, that I learned from God himself because this is not often preached, is that you can lose your life for messing with the precious things of God. And so the Lord said that he was going to shake the world. I'm going to shake it. I'm going to lift it up the way they lifted up that baby in front of King Solomon, and I'm going to rattle it until everything that is not fixed, it means anything that is not built on a sure foundation, everything that is not nailed down is going to tumble out, be destroyed, and be put in disarray. I'm going to shake this world the way a big strong man grabs hold of a smaller man and shakes him until all the change rolls out of his pocket, until his teeth are shaking in his mouth. Part of what the Lord said is that in 10 years time, he had his eye on particular ministers. He said that he was going to be watching them. He was going to be weighing them in the balance. And I spoke about this in the video about, it's called a word to the righteous. God said he was going to be weighing five-fold ministers in the balance. This word was given to me on January 17, 2014. And it's simply called a word on January 17, 2014. He said he was going to be evaluating them and within 10 years he would have reached an estimation on some of the world's biggest ministers. So imagine there's just me. I'm just with God spending more and more time in my notebooks, beginning to fill up my notebooks with things that I've never heard and, and growing a healthy fear of God and to just little me. God begins to name names. Joyce Meyer, T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, Eddie Long, Benny Hinn, and he said that these people would be weighed. He was going to check each one of them, and he said not all of them will be around at the end of the 10-year period, and not all of them are going to see my face either. They're going to die one by one, Celestial, and you are going to hear about it. He says that some of them will be in heaven. So God says that there would be ministers who, even though they die, their final estimation would be with him in heaven. He said that these ones that are taken away, they will see my face because I took them away to keep them from perdition. I was speaking of Minister Miles Monroe, who died tragically and shockingly. And as most people will admit, it seemed way before his time. It seemed that that man would still have a race to run. But I spoke about how everybody gets a unicycle, that we're supposed to cycle with precision on the narrow road. And that man's unicycle began to jump off the track. And God took him. God said that he took him. And the prophecy is on the master's, on the master's voice. It's called cornucopia, and it's from... 2019 and so the lord said that he would take people to heaven he said that several of them and here is one he said eddie long will receive in his flesh the eternal punishment of the things he's done creflo dollar shall not see my face unless he repents but his wife will be received because she continues to live a separate life unto me now imagine God is seeing a righteous and a, an unrighteous yoked in marriage, but one unrighteous has no chance unless there is genuine repentance. And God says the other one, though yoked with an unrighteous, has somehow managed to keep herself from defilement. And so he would receive her. Here's the subject of the prophecy. This we will call it tier one charges and indictment against T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes will not enter my presence. He can go and enter the presence of the ones he is currently serving. That is all the Lord said back then in 2014. And you asked me if I had a clue who he was currently serving since the man is on every international TV station serving God. In 2014, I had no clue of what the Lord meant when he said the ones he is currently serving. So this is tier one. In January 17, 2014, 
God said that this man will never enter his presence. He said that this man will never see his face. And now I come to the prophecy called Cornucopia, the Hall of Delights. I received it June 20, 2019. And then, at that time, God was giving me names to name. So in this prophecy, Creflo Dollar was openly named for his sins. God said he is a big fat compromiser. He is a showman and an extensive liar. God names, named Joyce Meyer and said that that woman in the spirit, she stands with a vacuum cleaner and all that vacuum cleaner does is suck money out of the congregation. I saw money flying out of big stadium crowds, going into that vacuum cleaner and going into the coffers of Joyce Meyer. And in both cases of those ministers, God said that he was watching them and he was watching if they would repent or not. This is June 2019. There was a man I saw and the Lord told me, don't name this man. Do not put this man in public and do not bring shame to this man. Here is what I wrote. There is a man I am told to mention, but not his name. The Lord said that this man was a special cup in his hand, a man that God gave a double portion, a man who was far more eloquent and talented than most of his ministry compatriots. And you cannot lie that when that man hits the pulpit and begins to go into the word, this is not a person who is unskilled in explaining what the word of God says. God becomes very angry when you actually get a double portion and you turn it into spiritual wasting. I saw written over the head of this man the word charis. Charis is the Greek word for grace, which also means divine favor, special ability. That's our root word for the word charisma. Charis can be seen as the special sauce that God will give someone. David had this. Solomon had even more of this. The special sauce that God will give someone that makes them exceptionally good at something. And in the case of this man, that is all I said, though I could see who I was talking about. He was called to preach the gospel. The Lord said that this man was a special cup in his hand, full of the Lord's good graces and virtues. And this is why I do not reply when people come and say, he was always false. You just haven't been living enough, long enough to have seen and inspected that man's older work before he became flawed, faulty, and a Freemason. The Lord said that he was full of the good graces of the Lord, but now he has profaned himself. This just means to wipe yourself with the filth of the dark kingdom while continuing to stand before the people as if you are clean and full of light. And God is not happy with him. The Lord, however, is full of tender mercy towards him, and that is why I cannot name him. For God has a soft spot for him, but I see a cup filling against him. This cup was once gold, but it has now become tarnished, which is always a sign that there is reprobate activity going on. Mm -hmm. A precious metal turning dull means that you have lost it somewhere and that you have to repent and come back to Jesus in order for him to polish off those dull and evil spots of tarnishing. This cup is filling steadily with a dark red liquid that is God's judgment against this man. Because this man was given a double portion, he was doubly gifted. I see that his cup is twice as big as other ministers. And this is why other ministers, Bishop Eddie Long, other ministers, um, Pastor Frederick Price, other ministers, Minister or Pastor Miles Monroe, they didn't have the same size of cup as T.D. Jakes. And so they were taken out early according to the judgment of God. And yet this man continues on. Bishop T.D. Jakes continues on. He's still standing. I see his cup is twice as big as other ministers. And I know that when this cup finally overflows, this man is going to hit trouble because God will make him drink that cup that he has filled by the profane things that he is doing. Let the reader read and understand for this image can be used for every one of us who continues stubbornly in our sin. And so the prophecy came on January the 5th, 2021. I held this prophecy back because it was full of people dying. 
the prophecy i finally published it on july 11th 2022 yet i had received it as far back as january 5 and one of the people that god said was going to die is the man tb joshua and he did die and the prophecy was still unpublished god said that teachers should know they will receive a stricter judgment and in this prophecy because the lord was putting so much pressure on me let me tell you believers that now one of the strongest thing that god says to me is do not hold back my words it's not exactly a threat but it's kind of like what god told jeremiah right at the beginning when he called him he said that you will go to whoever i tell you to go to and when you go there you're going to speak all my words not some of them you will go to whom I send you, and you will say what I give you to say. And what he told Jeremiah is, if you get out there and let the public pressure and the people going, why don't you prophesy about this? Why don't you prophesy anything good? How come you say you're a prophet and God hasn't given you this vision yet and this revelation yet? God told Jeremiah in, in private, you get out there and you let the mouths of those people control you like a radio dial and tell you to say what they want you to say. God told him, I will confound you in front of them. I will dismay you. Do you know what dismay is? It is a kind of utter hopelessness when the thing you are hoping for fails. It's like applying for housing and getting told that you have to wait until 3034 to get considered or put on the waiting list. It is a sinking feeling when God tells you that. And I made up my mind from the beginning that nothing would come out of my mouth hooked out by what people want to hear. And so God was speaking of the fall of pastors, and in this old prophecy, January 5, 2021, a long time ago, a year ago, where God had named names of who will die, the same names from 2020, 2014 came back. Joyce Meyer, Dave Meyer, Creflo Dollar, Taffy Dollar, T.D. Jakes, Eddie Long, Benny Hinn. These were the same names that God had spoken and broken them up into righteous departure unrighteous departure he said that for bringing the unrighteous corrupt wicked doctrine false doctrine and corrupting misleading and fooling the church he was going to judge them but that's not all he said god was speaking and saying that td jakes that was the first time i understood the 24 14 prophecy is a freemason that this man has taken occultic vows and that he is part of a brotherhood. That he is serving Satan, who is his true Lord and Master. And therefore he is using his gifts and abilities to cloud the mind of people. Do you know what it is when you are in a ministry and someone is working in the dark arts? Someone has taken an oath to Satan. You're sitting there thinking your pastor has taken an oath to God. And as God, like God revealed in the African, as the problem in the African churches, you're sitting there and a man has taken an oath to an entity with breast and a tail sitting under the sea on a throne with a crown on her head, the queen of her coast and her little minor deities. Your pastor serves that thing and then stands before you, preaches a word of seduction to you has taken the souls of the member in, members in covenant and can hand them over at any time to pay his dues under the sea. I don't know much about Freemasonry. I just know that it's a thing that serves the devil, especially at the highest level. And they're a tight brotherhood that is giving out no secrets. So that is... Cornucopia is the second indictment, 2019. The third indictment, no more false prophecy. M ministers who are going to depart the life because God said the 10 year period has come to an end and the people he was naming, TB Joshua, Frederick Price, even the lady who was still alive, Pastor Marilyn Hickey, he said that it's game up for them, that their corruption is so deep and he's going to take them away. The third indictment. Here we are, the fourth indictment. Title of the prophecy, T.D. Jakes and the Fivefold Ministry. When I woke up today, I heard the Lord said that you will make that video today. The one about T.D. Jakes. That man is going to die in scandal and I will have no further mercy on him. 
he is going to die fighting scandals. And God has been saying this for a period of days. I have been hearing it. You have not made the video. Make the video. And so I am making this video today before the sun sets. Because one of the rules of carrying God's prophetic words is that if you keep them too long, they will... Sorry about that. Um... burn you they will burn you you will get no peace until you let them out because until a proclamation is made god cannot judge a person you're holding on to a judgment word for somebody god has told you and told you about that girl who is your friend to give her a warning and you're standing there i think she'll get offended you know lord i'm waiting for the right time and then a bus hits her ezekiel 33 when i give you a word to warn the unrighteous in his sin and you do not sound the warning. And the unrighteous is taken away in his sin. He is taken away, but his blood I will require of you. And so I took the time. I am taking this moment to bring this word out because this word is sitting on my head like a boiling pot. And it must come out. He will die in legal battles and he will be fighting for the last shreds of his reputation. God says he's going to shame this man. He's just been saying these things and I've been thinking, Lord, I will make the video. I will expose the details of his sexual infidelity to his wife, his children, and the whole world. He has been grossly unfaithful to me. Gross unfaithfulness of the kind I can no longer forgive. I take my hand off him and I reject him just like Saul. He will go down in a wave of scandals and impropriety that will rock his church to the foundations. He is a pedophile and he is gay. He is homosexual and he is not interested in women. I will expose the scandals with boys and youths. And I will bring out all the details so that people can know who their beloved bishop really is. Celestial, there is a difference between a boy and a youth. A boy is too small to understand or even give sexual consent. You should never touch a boy sexually. It is not his time. A boy is to be pure and set apart for his day of covenant to his wife. Parents, there's gold for you here. There's gold for you, allowing your 8 and 12 year olds, he's such a mature boy for his age, to watch the same programs that you are watching. And I'm not even going to question why you are watching those programs and claiming that you are Christian. When you touch a boy, you anger me because I hold children special. I see them as protected zones. Parents are supposed to watch over the young and even animals in the field know this. A youth is different. A youth is one who is older and he is aware of his sexuality. But youths should also be protected. Youths should also stay pure. Young men, there is gold for you here. You think that you are practicing safety when you wrap it up. God has a brand new standard for you. His standard is zip it up because he does not want to have to come and thrash you with judgment for being sexually immoral and impure in your generation. Five dollar duo at Burger King Double up flavors when hunger dings Whopper Junior and Royal There have been a lot of people that have been contacting me about this a woman named um, Celestial the master's voice who has prophesied everything that's happening in T.D. Jake's life right now. Now, uh, regarding this woman, I can't co-sign her, I can't endorse her, I can't say she's a woman of God or not a woman of God. I know nothing about her. I'm not going to speak negatively about her or positive. I don't know anything about this lady. But, we're going to watch this video. I've watched maybe 20, 30 seconds of it. I haven't watched it in full. But we are going to watch it right now. And we're going to see what this is really about. I heard that she has prophesied everything that's happening now. And she seems to stand for holiness, righteousness, and really operate like a biblical prophet when it comes to her expression, you know, the way she utters her words, the way she exposes, and these things become in the past. You feel me? Um, you know, with myself, I don't agree with what everyone says. We will always 
always have our differences, but nonetheless, I'm going to watch this video and we're going to just see um, what this is all about. Next, there will be scandals among the high and the mighty. So I saw a row of thrones seated in high positions. Earthquake hit those thrones. They started to shake and people began to fall out of the thrones in public and shameful falls. The Lord said that Bishop T.D. Jakes will have one of the biggest scandals of all time in the Christian church. One of the biggest shaming falls before God finally judges him in taking his life. The Lord said this man is not a straight man. He is not a heterosexual man. His name will be named by the people he has been with. His scandal will involve his sexual orientation and God says that this is when people will finally see who they have been following with a lot of these pastors and spiritual leaders. So wow, just from listening to that, that's facts in itself. I know, you know, a lot of people won't listen to this prophetic word because they're so used to their mainstream apostles and prophets. They're so used to their spiritual fathers and mothers. But this is a woman that nobody knows about. They don't know her track record or track history or anything like that. Either. They're not in unison with her that. ministry. They're not connected to her or anything. And she's just like in the wilderness just releasing the word of the Lord. Right? And pertaining to what she's saying here, and this was in September 1st, 2022, facts. T.D. Jakes has not exposed publicly and you're seeing people that he was with that have now been speaking out you're seeing the allegations you're seeing the accusations you're seeing that woman coming out and saying certain things you're seeing that one guy speaking subliminally about him you're seeing people speaking even prominent voices are speaking you know what I mean and and God is doing the exposures because a lot of you are saying let's pray let's pray for the person let's pray for Didi Didi yeah pray for him but it's not going to stop exposure because the Bible says in John 30 uh, John chapter 3 verse 20 everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed and y'all already know that T.D. Jakes was having my video taken down you already know that I made a video and I used one of his videos for 30 seconds and he had that thing copyrighted real quick. He had to take it down within 36 hours. So there is an exposure that I, that I brought to the limelight. You understand me? So what she's saying here is facts. You can't hate on it. It's facts. Well, this prophecy came before the other one. This one is September September 1st that the Lord first said that on top of being a false prophet, on top of misleading people, on top of, he called it financial impropriety, which means that there is severe questions about what happens to money in the potter's house. He says that this man is a wolf in sheep's clothing, that this man is a Freemason, and that he is brotherhood. So she's saying that the Lord is saying that T.D. Jakes is a Freemason. And he's in the brotherhood. Now, when we look at the photos with T.D. Jakes, okay, we see P. Diddy, right? And in this specific photo, we see P. Diddy doing the Illuminati symbolism, the triangle. That's what he's doing, right? He's doing it. And we know Puff Daddy Freemason, Puff Daddy, the worst of it. The P. Diddy, the worst of it. You understand me? He's, he's definitely in that. And he'll be throwing up that sign. You, listen, people don't throw up that sign for no reason. Nobody stands like that for no reason. That's that brotherhood stance. That's that brotherhood uh, stuff. You know, TDG, he, he'd be hanging around with, with, with P. Diddy like crazy. And it's super questionable because he don't preach holiness. He, he, don't, he, don't, he, don't be, he don't be preaching the truth in terms of like holiness, repentance, homosexuality, uh, how dangerous and how diabolical it is. And it makes you question now I'm all about exposure. The Lord is a, the Lord has revealed so much to me in my exposure. A lot of people hate me for it. Have got mad at me about it, right? She, the same lady has exposed TB Joshua. I've exposed TB Joshua. She's exposed Alpha Kawa. I've exposed Alpha Kawa. She's exposed Shepherd Bashiri. I've exposed Shepherd Bashiri. So her, me and this lady have exposed the same people. You know, and like I said. I'm not going to go and co-sign someone I don't know, but I can co-sign this message that she's given with everything I've heard 
so far. Like, bruh. This is what the Lord revealed months ago in the false prophets prophecy. But now in this live call, God brought out that this man is not interested in women, but is bent towards males, but not only that has harmed underage youths and boys. And God says that this sex scandal will be named by the people he has been with. The males are going to bring out, he says, proof. The evidence this bishop will be fighting is hard evidence and God says he will spend considerable time, considerable energy, considerable power and considerable money to suppress that evidence so that it does not come out in the legal battles that will follow. But he, God said that we are going into an era where the evidence will get a chance to speak. Can I get you a drink, Gabby? Agent Gladwell. Am I trouble? You have a chance to speak. Now, one thing I'm going to say is this. I had a dream uh, about four days ago where I saw T.D. Jakes. I'm telling you this is a dream, okay? I had a dream where I saw T.D. Jakes in court. Right, he was in court. He had a cane. I don't know why he had a cane on. He was in court. I think the cane represented his, like, his age. He's older and whatnot. And there he was in court with a man. And in the dream, the man's name was Bryce. And I don't know if the person's name is actually Bryce or not. I don't know. But it's the, the, the guy's name was Bryce. And he was a younger guy, younger than T.D. Jakes. And T.D. Jakes, there were some threats and some things going around to, to suppress that man's voice, to suppress what he was trying to speak. And there was, Because we know T.D. Jakes is connected, right? I'm not going to say anything crazy. You know, and in my dream, there were certain threats through connections and whatnot to silence that, that man's voice. And I told my wife this dream when I woke up. I posted it briefly on Facebook, then I took it down, but I talked to my wife about this. And listen, the, just a random accusation does not go global like this. It, this thing, what's happening right now, it, is, it just connects with everything T.D. Jakes says, like, his, he, he believes that homosexuality, his stand, he has said that his stance on, on homosexuality has evolved and is evolving from scripture, right? And he believes so much garbage that's insane. So I can tell you for a fact that everything this woman said, I, the Lord has spoke to me, in a dream, and also I have exposed T.D. Jakes in the same limelight, in the, in the same way, right? And I have received a lot of heat from it on Facebook, on YouTube, and all of these places because he's a general, he's a motivational speaker, and I'm not even saying the allegations are facts or whatever. I'm not saying this. I'm saying allegedly, alleged, but what I'm telling you by the Spirit of God that T.D. Jakes is questionable and there's something in secret that will be exposed about this man. And you will see people in the body of Christ that will defend him to their grave. They will defend it because of his motivation. They will defend him. Listen, it's not even biblical to be a pastor and just be motivational. It's not biblical. You, you got to preach the full counsel of God. How can you not teach people repentance, holiness, all these things? And it's like, it, it's just crazy to me. And she... Let's go back a little bit. It hit those thrones. They started to shake and people began to fall out of the text. There will be scandals among the high and the mighty. So I saw a row of thrones seated in high positions. Earthquake hit those thrones. They started to shake and people began to fall out of the thrones in public and shameful falls. The Lord said that Bishop T.D. Jakes will have one of the biggest scandals of all time in the Christian church. One of the biggest... And it's, it was one of the biggest, because right now it was so big, he had to come out and, and talk about it a little bit. He had to come out and talk about it. He had to send his his uh, ministry team to go around and terminate my video and report my video to YouTube and whatnot and, and, and request YouTube to take it down. And you two told me T.D. Jakes is the one that did it, right? Now, everything she 
said here about God tearing down those thrones, the Bible says in Daniel chapter 2 verse 21, he controls the course of the world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. So the Lord is the one that is tearing down all these people. The Lord is the one that is exposing all these people. It is the Lord that's doing it. And if you do not, if you do not take heed to what the Lord is doing, you will always defend these things. Now, when we look at the scripture, those that refuse to repent of their sexual immorality, like Jezebel, Jezebel ended up dying. Jezebel was cast into a sickbed. Jezebel was, was taken down. I believe she was eaten by the dogs or thrown off a tower or something like that. You know, nevertheless, I have a few things against you that you, t that you tolerate that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess. All right, so according to scripture, people, the false prophets that were living in sexual morality, it didn't end well with them. It did not end well with them. It doesn't end well with the wicked. It doesn't end well with the unrepentant. My thing is this, TD. Repent from your associations, man. It doesn't look good. Repent, fam. Stop trying to get your team to tear down every video. Just come out and address everything to the detail. Just come out, address everything in detail. But you try to take down every video. You try to beat it over the bush. All I got to do is repent silently. And this lady comes out and says something, and it comes to pass. Shame me. Right? Period. And... And I see a video of Lovi trying to defend T.D. Jakes and trying to defend, you know, talking about trickery, lies, and deception. The thing about Lovi is that he will never address, a, 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 he will never address um, false doctrine. He will never address doctrines of demons when it comes to the third eye. He will never address a, a homosexual pastor promoting homosexuality. He will never address those things. Lovi is hyper grace. I've never seen a, a prophet in the Bible that's hyper grace. Lovi is hyper grace. Or even if someone, it's all about, you know, if someone's in the game too, if your brother does this and your brother does that. So you just stay quiet the whole time when every prophet in the Bible was all about reconciliation. They're about repentance. They're about holiness and about exposure. All about the fear of the Lord. But guess what? Lovi and Passion Jerry are all about games and, and, and all these prophecy, word of knowledge games. It's a game. It's okay. There's no fear of the Lord. There's no fear of the Lord. There's no fear of the Lord. Now, am I going to agree with everything this woman has said? Probably not. I haven't watched much of her stuff at all. Right? But this right here, I'm telling you. Now, I love to hear God for myself. Right? And when, when I hear the, the voice of the Lord for myself and the Lord confirms these things with me, and I watch a video like this, I'm like, this is beyond confirmation. I already know because the Holy Ghost spoke to me, but this is beyond confirmation. Look, I've been on a trend of just exposing, 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 exposing. Even before these allegations came out crazy, um, it, it was on my heart to make a post about T.D. Jakes. Like, it's not normal for him to be walking around with P. Diddy than being on, in the pulpit. It's not normal for this, 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 that. It's not normal for him to be dancing with the wicked and coming out of the pulpit and never teaching holiness or repentance. Well, that's kind of normal because he ain't hanging out with the wicked. You feel me? But this word that Celestial gave, right, that she gave, Master's voice, this has shaken up the whole body of Christ. This right here has shaken up the body of Christ. This word, period. I don't know anything about her. Zilch. Zero. Nothing. All I'm saying is this right here. And she's doing the things I'm doing. And, and she's more like, she says it more bolder, worse than me. She really go in. Right? And I, this is why I told you, there are certain people that are called to expose. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Baby, stop right there. Yes. Um, before, I, let, let me add my bit into it. Uh, years ago, uh, when I came to this city that I'm currently in, in Ohio, 
God met me here in Columbus. He, I had a relationship with, with God before. But I drifted away and I went back out into the world. And I can feel it in my spirit that I was losing a connection with, with God. Because when I, at the age of 24, I, I, I gave my life to Yeshua. But as I got around other people and got out further out into the world, I, I kind of put, I, I, you know, you kind of drift away. And as I know that I was drifting away, every once in a while, I thought it was my imagination. I would, somewhere along the line, I would be driving down the road. And I'm not saying I'm not a prophet, no seer, nothing like that. I'm not taking no position. But I have to start. And I don't know what made me look up at the sky sometimes while I was with my friends. And um, I picture a man at the throne just sitting there over the heavens, over, over the clouds. Just picture just sitting there. And it never dawned on me till years later I come to come to living in Youngstown, Ohio, living in Cincinnati, and come here to Columbus. God met me here in Columbus, Ohio. And he met me through a woman who was similar to that woman. But she's an older woman. Oh yeah. And this woman is of the Lord. This is the one who led me back to God. She's a, she operates in a prophetic. She operates in a prophetic. Now, the, the story about her was she didn't want to mentor no man. She, Cause she had that kind of connection with God, but I told probably told the story a long time ago. But God mentioned told her, cause she's born and raised here in Columbus, to come over, and you're going to show him my ways to the kingdom. And she said, and she said, no, Lord, I'll give him over to a brother, but I'm not going. To, I don't mentor no man. I'll 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 give him to the brother. The Most High is hell. Said you. Or going to mentor him. You're going to raise him. And then she told me. That when he saw me. I was precious. In his eyes. And at the time. I was really feeling down. And in my spirit. I did not know the things that I know now. And I was shocked. You know. Because I was kind of like. Beat up and just wore out. And it felt. Some people's. And, and before. It was like. It. I had one brother come up to me that was, in, you know, he just saved and filled with his, filled with the rock, the spirit. And he's able to look over the hope, you know, which is God. What, to look to see that my light was going out. And he said, brother, I don't know who you got a church to go to, but the Lord commissioned me to come over and tell you to, to find, find a church. Right before I met her, right as I met her, and, and at first, you know, I'm just thinking, oh, just just someone just tag along, hang along, that's cool. But no, it was a mission. And how he showed me, because one time we would spend times glorifying God, talking about God. She was talking about, and I would go out with her to the nursing homes. I would go out to her to the streets. I would go to these hospitals in different areas and, she, and I would see the people drawn to her, would attract to her, uh, men would attract her to her, women. She had, some people got that draw, but it was the glory that was drawn. Then she has a, a good personality and she ministered to them right there. And she still ministers to people. And her children who are about my age and grandchildren couldn't understand what the relationship between me and their, their mother, their grandmother. It was, I was, she was mentoring me. And I know there's some traditional man, ain't nobody, but this was something commissioned by God. 
Think about it, guys. If there are false, a false prophetess, false a priesthood, false priest, priestess, and priestess, who you think they they, they pattern off of? Then the Most High God got His women prophets, His woman priest priestess to give the give the kingdom. This is very true. So. This 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 some stuff gonna be coming around about her and saying that oh she sound like she's no 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 um, and and I would like to say warn people this one don't touch her with your mouth if you ain't got nothing good to say don't say nothing at all this is a warning because there's a few people I kind of I, I kind of watch and kind of admire but this young lady. The Father allowed her to come forth out of the kingdom because there's so many of us is online. And sometimes some of us don't really give that quality time to the Most High God. And the only reason why I know this because this woman have a, a prayer life. Sound like, it's not like how the mentor mentored me. And let me tell you something. When the woman, this a woman like this prays, and have a connection to the Most High God, everything in the atmosphere acknowledge, acknowledge it. Everything you have anointing, and like I mentioned, she would pray so much that the glory would would would, would saturate her atmosphere. The glory of the Heavenly Father, and when you and you when you go in this. this like when going to her house, her it was like you sit in the couch. Next thing you know, you all stressed out coming in, and it was just all of a sudden you just feel relaxed. Then you feel at peace. Then it's like that peaceful will have you fall asleep. I fell asleep in her apartment, just talking, just sitting, tap, daylight, just talking, and I just go to sleep. And every time we would talk about the Most High God, there were things. In an atmosphere that was happening that was mind blowing. Even one time, I kid you not, we was outside talking and looking up at the stars. And I don't know what, what we was looking at the stars one night, and it was the moon. And the moon and the stars, there's something like this in the heavens. And I'm like, I mean, it would be things. It it was things like that. And then one time. The the, the, the the glory of the Lord. Now this is going this something. This is going to be hilarious. I'm going. This is a kind of hilarious part. Here I'm thinking. I said, uh oh, God's here. I'm thinking I'm about to get a body. I'm about to get a body. Oh 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 no no. I said, and, and all of a sudden she can feel the present. I'm like, whoa. I said, uh, I don't know what made me do this. It's just that like I, I think I better go. I, I kid you not. When I went to try to get up, I couldn't get up. I, I was like held down, like I was held, and 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 it's, and, it, and as she, you know, as she praying, gave him the glory, the whole atmosphere starts saturating, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh my goodness, because I work, because you, I'm thinking, where is this? Is it coming from outside? Or is it coming from the up? No, it was the glory. Come, come in that apartment. Just there are people in this world, and they are sons and daughters of God, and they have this woman has a relationship with them. So if anybody speaks against this woman, it ain't gonna be too pretty. Count the judgment against you. I'm just saying, because there's some people out there about to say some stuff. If I, if I had my chance, I'm just a little channel. If I had my chance, tell them, do not put your mouth on this. This is this is God's baby. This, this is She's precious to him. Oh, no. Do not talk about this young woman. You the old people say, you ain't got nothing nice to say. Don't say nothing at all. Keep your lip zip because you could be bringing something on you. So this is just a warning. Don't touch this this, this young woman. Because I understand being around somebody who's had that kind of relationship with the Most High God, I, I see 
I'm a witness to what they do. And the and everything in the word will come come to light. Everything they read, you read in the Bible, comes to par, come to pass. Trust me. So I'm looking forward to sharing this video and I want to upload this as a warning to people. Do not mock this woman because she is of God. Alright then ladies and gentlemen, I hope you like this like and subscribe to next time. Take care and be blessed. Stay